Hey, what's up guys? It's Matt, and I know I haven't made a video commentary for a while or any kind of guide for anything, uh, but this is a tip that's really going to help you guys with Lava Strike Worm tasks, or if you just like killing them. Um, a lot of you hardcore slayers will probably have Lava Strikes on your perm block list because they're terrible XP, uh, but some of you guys who like making money, they're pretty good money because of the ashes, and... If you are somebody who enjoys PKing, you probably found yourself out there more than once, whether it's actually doing the Slayer task or PKing people doing the Slayer task, or if you just like going and PKing the PKers for people who are hunting those doing the Slayer task. So this guide is going to go through um, kind of a method to make sure that you kill the Lava Strike Room before it ever burrows. So I know you guys can probably just DPS through it, uh, but if you get really bad hits, then it's going to burrow, and if you're close, it's going to drag you in, or if you're far away, then it's going to burrow, and it basically takes ages to kill when, when it does that, because it blocks all the hits during that time. So, hope you guys enjoy. Alright, so have a look at this next clip. From the time it pops up, it's going to shoot one, two, three, four, five, six attacks, and then it's going to burrow. So on the seventh attack on every single kill, it's going to burrow. And I'm not sure what happens when it comes back up. If it does six more attacks and burrows, that's more than likely the case, but I'm not really sure. So the main issue with the strike worms burrowing is when it pulls you in, it becomes invulnerable for a couple seconds and untargetable. Uh, or if you're far away and it burrows and travels, then it becomes untargetable for a lot longer period of time. So the trick is going to help you kill them faster by preventing the burrow and overall speed up your slayer task and increase your XP and kill times. Alright, so now it's time to get into the actual guide portion. So when you first investigate the mound, the strike worm will pop up and you'll be immediately put into combat with it. That allows you to just use an ability rather than having to click attack on it and then start using abilities. So this is what you want to do. You want to be spamming the ability that you're going to use first on it. That way when it comes up, it immediately casts the ability and this will set the timing for the rest of the abilities. So as you can see here, I started with Sonic Wave. You can start with any ability, but it helps to keep the same ability rotation so that you can get used to the method before you actually start doing it more often. As soon as you use the first ability, uh, make sure that you run, as, run away to max distance from the actual worm itself. So just a quick note that this guide is going to be dependent on the fact that you're using a long range weapon, so either maging at 7 or 8 squares away or ranging at 8 or 9 squares away. Alright, so as you can see here, I've initiated combat, I run to max range, and then I'm going to use 9 abilities on the Strike Worm before I do something that makes it not burrow, as you can see here. Alright, so one thing I neglected to mention is that you're going to need 4 squares free behind you that you can walk in. So as soon as I fire the ninth ability, I step back 4 squares. And as soon as I anticipate myself hitting that spot four squares behind me, I immediately use an ability to cause me to run back and hit the strike worm. And that's all there is to it. All you have to do is wait till the ninth ability, step back four squares, use another ability to initiate combat and cause your character run, to run back towards the strike worm within range, and it won't burrow anymore. So keep in mind that because you're max distance away, um, if you mess up and it does go underground, you're going to be adding a lot of time onto your kills. So the best thing to do if you're not sure or if you lost count is just to step closer to it. So instead of burrowing and then traveling to you, then it just pulls you in since that'll not cause the kill to be as long. So I'll include a few perfect clips of me doing this over and over again just so you can kind of get used to it. You'll watch me do pretty much the same rotation every time. Starts off with a sonic wave, then a rack, then a chain, then a combust, then another sonic wave, and a wild magic, a dragon breath, and a deep stun. So that's the rotation that I usually use. Um, it varies sometimes. Um, if you've lost count again and you're not really sure when to do it, another thing that you can do is use Tuska's Wrath because it hits 10k. It's like basically a guaranteed kill if it's lower HP. Uh, please note that if you do use Tuska's Wrath at the beginning when it has the 50% reduction shield up, it will have the damage of Tuska's Wrath as well, so it will only hit 5.5k-ish. So that's all for the guide. I hope you guys enjoy, um, and please use this as much as you can. Um, it definitely helps with my Strike Room tasks. It speeds up the kills a lot.
So until next time, I'll see you guys later. Harlem shit.